Hello dear subscriber, uh, I will assume you have already clicked the subscribe button if you watch part one. Either way, welcome to part two of this uh, Tic Tac tutorial. Um, if you remember, then the last time we created a nice Tic Tac Toe board, but we don't have a function yet to announce a winner or check for a winner. So that's what we're going, that's what we're up to in uh, this part of the tutorial. So. Uh, Let's head back to our game logic file where we implement all of the fun stuff. And now we have a function for button press, label of button, reset game. And now we're going to check for winner, which is going to be a few functions actually, because there are a few things that we need to check. We could make it all in, actually, I'm going to make it all in one function because we can. Um, so I'm going to call it a uh, func check winner make that a function and let's return a boolean either true or false either we have a winner uh, or we don't so in here we're going to need a few statements let's just return false as a standard so there are a few things that we need to check here the first thing we need to check is we're going to check the rows has there been a winner when looking at the rows, has there been three in a row in one of the rows? Then we're going to check the columns. Columns. And then we're going to check the diagonals. So that's basically all of the winning combinations. Either you get three in a row in the rows or in the columns or in the diagonals. So let's create a check for each of the directions. So we're going to use a for loop um, when checking for the rows for i, n, and we're going to do it in strides from, let's see, from uh, what's going to be, it's going to be from zero to nine by strides of three. So I'm going to write out the, the for loop first, and then we're going to take a look at it afterwards. So if board, at i is equal to active player and, and and i'm just going to copy paste this one more time and a third time and then i'm going to change the i plus one and here i plus two so perhaps you have already spotted the logic here but i'm just going to add let's see have to register the win so we're going to return true actually let's head back to our game board then it will be a bit easier to explain if we can visualize it so the for loop operates in strides so the first one i in the first iteration i is equal to zero which means this one and then we check if this one is equal to i plus one which is this one is equal to i plus two is this one that is the first iteration. Then in the second iteration, i is going to be equal to three. And we check this one, this one, this one. And in the third iteration and last one, we check this one, this one, this one. So that is basically the logic behind it. And as you can imagine, we can pretty much do the same for the columns. We just change around a few, actually, we don't need the stride for the columns. We can just go zero to three. And then instead of plus one, we say plus three. And here we say plus six. So that should basically work for our columns. And then we check our diagonals, which we're just going to type out. If board, perhaps you have a better idea of checking the diagonals. This is at least the best thing I came up with. So board is equal to active player and board. I'm just going to copy paste this, be a little lazy here. And another time, and here I'm going to have four. And here I'm going to have eight. Let's see, let's click the correct place there. And then we should have a winner in that diagonal. And let's just copy paste it because we have to check both diagonals. So that was the first one. And here comes the second one, which is going to be two and four, 
because there's a middle one and six it should be so here we go um that's our checking for win logic so before we try that we can actually do some more stuff to this button pressed function up here because there's no reason to check for a winner if the user presses a button that has already been tapped or that is already occupied by one player so let's break this whole function in case that is the case or if there's already a winner in which case we just want to disable uh, the button tap so we're going to use a guard statement for that not another guard but at board if that um, location is equal to nil and in case there hasn't been a winner which we will need another variable for to keep track of so let's define it up here published var winner should be a player optional is equal to nil and if winner is equal to nil which means there hasn't been a winner we are going to continue on so just return in case else this guard statement will stop the flow and we'll need another else here like that so we know the space is free and we know there hasn't been a winner so we can actually just take this copy paste it and remove this if statement and we're going to just print it out for now so let's do it like this active player has won the game in case there is not a winner then we're going to simply set say it's the next player's turn so we can take that statement here cut it out and paste it up here instead and because we now have another variable which is winner we're going to also reset that one when we reset the game winner is equal to nil okay so i'm a little bit excited now to see if this, this works if you remember uh, we simply print it out when the winner uh, wins or a player wins so we have to check down here um, so let's try to get x to win x has won the game and the buttons are disabled let's restart the game and let's get this one o to win there we go has won the game restart game and you can play all kinds of funny let's see and the diagonals work as well hopefully you enjoyed it as much as i did if you did make sure to click the subscribe button and then i will see you back in the next video take care and uh cheers <laughs>